Hey, welcome back to the lecture. I am in the exercise 007. Let's create a new folder and I'll call it as QM. Now, here we have to keep the new model file which we are going to create using the QM tool. Let's launch the QM tool. Go to File, New Model and select QPN, None and give a name for your project or model. Let's call this as clock alarm and provide the path of this folder. I'll just click and I will open that in the file explorer. So I'm going to copy this path. Just open that location and select QM and click OK. You must see here QPN. After that, before creating a state machine model, first you have to create a package. Just right click here and select add package. Package is nothing but it's a group of uh, different elements. And by means of package, you can provide a namespace. Project may have uh, different packages. Project may contain any number of packages. And if you have any plan to reuse certain variables name or attribute names or function names in different packages, then you can assign a different namespace. You can get more information about packages here in this user manual. Basically what it says is it is used to group elements and to provide a namespace for the grouped element. A package may contain other packages. Inside the package, you can create classes, you can create free attributes. This we have already seen, and you can create uh, free operations, directories, etc. It also provides a namespace option here. You can assign a name for a namespace if you are planning to use more than one packages. For stereotype option, just select components here, and you can give a name for the package. I'll give HSMs. That's how you create a package. And under the package, let's create class. Add class. This is our main application structure name. Let's give the name clock underscore alarm and select the super class. Super class is QHSM. Our clock alarm is derived from QHSM. Then save. So now we can create attribute, add attribute. First attribute is current time. Type is u int 32 underscore t and visibility i'll keep it as private this is a non-static attribute and after that let's create one more i'll call this as temp time u int 32 underscore t private like that let's create a couple of attributes i just added all these attributes and now also add a directory here and add files to keep the generated code. Go to your package here and right click and you can select add directory. Let's give the path for the directory dot dot slash yes rc. We are going to keep all of our source files here src. Now here let's add file. Let me call the source file as clock alarm underscore sm dot cpp that's a cpp file and again add another file clock alarm underscore sm dot h currently i'll keep them as internal files and now let's uh, provide the include guards for the header file fine now let's generate the code Accept GPL. Files are generated. Now let's check. We got two files here. Now let's add the state machine. State machine we add to the class. Right click and add state machine. Double click on this. Here you get the canvas to draw your state machine. Let's open this one. First, let's create three simple states. You can get all the required state machine components from here like states, transitions, choice segment, initial transition, etc. So now just click on this state. Then you need not to drag anything. 
just come here and just click that's it that draws the state and you can copy and paste to make another one paste make another one and we need one super state let's say draw the super state like this these are sub states of this state and you can also draw one more super state like this you can make this canvas bigger let's give the name for this state this here you can change the name i'll call this as ticking this is i'll call it as clock this i'll call it as settings this i'll call it as clock setting this i'll call it as alarm setting now let's draw some transitions first of all the initial state when the application starts the initial state will be ticky initial state how to draw initial state very simple here it is it is already ready-made initial transition is available just click on this initial transition and you have to draw like this this is our initial transition or initial pseudo state and this is the initial transition now let's draw a transition from here to here when the signal set arrives it should transit to clock setting just take this transition component and just draw like this by default it names it as trig1 you can select that component and you can change the name here we'll use capital letters for all the signals set and when ok arrives when the state is ticking then it transits to alarm setting i will draw like this and you give one super state then let's draw a bot from settings to here this is about a b r t and after that okay okay we need uh, one more state for alarm notification i will draw that here so just expand this expand this canvas let's draw one state here like this and i'll call this as alarm notify and it happens with the event alarm when it is in the alarm notify it will be showing notification it will be saying user hey alarm has happened so user say ok and when user presses ok here it should come back to this clock but it should go to the history state let's define the history for clock we need deep history history for clock history for clock can be achieved by using a history state on states any of the boundary line i take the history and i put that on the boundary you have to put that on the boundary you see here it doesn't allow you to put here the meaning of this is you know history of a state let's try once again let's take the history here and then draw something like this this is a history of clock this is a default transition if the history is not available then it's a default transition this signifies the default transition and we'll take one transition from here to history i'll call this as okay save it so now let's generate some code go to sm.h and let's first define the signals these are the signals let's create an enum clock alarm signals and don't forget to initialize the first signal to q user sig and after that let's go to sm dot cpp and here let's use declare and let's give the declarations so you can just drag and drop this class name here and after that just add the required header files here include arduino dot h include qpn dot h 
include lcd.h and include so the header file clock alarm underscore sm.h now generate the code code is generated let's see here you can see that in the sm.h we already have this and dot uh, cpp we got the structure declaration and the signatures of all the state handlers that's it we have not added any definitions yet all right so now let's download qp nano arduino library for that go to resources and go to arduino and after that download qp arduino for your machine i'll go for windows now first let's install qp framework so just double click on this and select the directory by default it will get installed in c directory that's fine so here you can deselect the things which you don't require for example we are not using uh, arm processor here so you may uh, deselect these options and we are also not using qpc++ so you can deselect that too but i'll keep everything because i have enough disk space i'll just click next and next install it is taking some time now let's click finish so the installation is over and now let's install qp arduino library let's go back to the download and let's extract this And now you have to copy all these things and you have to paste it into Arduino sketchbook location. For that, just open the Arduino IDE. Let's open the Arduino IDE. Here, go to File and Preferences. Copy this location. And go to File Explorer and open that location. So this is my sketchbook location here you have to paste it what you do is go to a uh, qp arduino library just copy this and in the sketchbook location just paste it that's it so i have already did this that's why it's asking to replace some files so i'll just go for replace the files in the destination now you see the files are copied here and if you go under libraries you can see there are two libraries qpcpp for arm based arduino boards and qpn that is qp nano framework for avr based arduino boards and uh, so this has all the framework related source files so now after that so just go to your project okay and go to the platform io.ini file and here you must create this variable lib underscore depth is equal to so paste the path of the qpn library what you just installed in your machine okay i mean the path to the qpn arduino library now let's build there is a mistake here a double quote was missed generate the code once again let's compile so the build is fine now let's go to the next step let's generate the definitions define save and generate the code here you can see that we got the definitions of all the state handlers and now let's create an object of this structure our main application object so we will add that as a static variable static class attribute on the class right click and click on add attribute i'll call this as obj its type is uh, this type clock underscore alarm just type that clock underscore alarm and it is a static variable and i'll keep the visibility to private 
now let's save and generate the code here you can see that we created an object of this type and uh, now let's provide a constructor for our class or structure let's add a constructor constructor can be added as a free operation so now let's create a constructor for our class in the constructor you can initialize any of the attribute of the object if you want or you can use that constructor to call the constructor of the superclass as we did in the previous exercise remember that the constructor should be shared with the main.cpp that's why we will create the constructor as a free operation let's go here click on this package and create add operation we will just give the name for our constructor just type the name of the class here clock underscore alarm underscore ctor and return type let's keep it as wide because return type of the ctor must be wide after that you can keep this as a global function and you can put any code here in the code section you can call the constructor of the super class that is qhsm underscore ctor and here the first argument is a pointer to the superclass that is address of our object that is clock alarm underscore obj dot super comma second argument here is address of the initial state handler what's the initial state handler in our code that is this one so just copy this and use the macro q state cost something like let's check the documentation q state cost use that macro and mention the initial state handler you can even create a um, couple of attributes or parameters and by using that parameter the main function can pass couple of initial values to the constructor so that the constructor can initialize the attributes of the main class object you can also do that let's save and generate the code in the sm.h let's declare the constructor and in the sm.cpp we can define that let's generate the code we got the constructor here 